ascended into heaven. O come, let us adore him. of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
pray. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us into the same place whither our Savior Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, Almighty God, that like as we do believe thine only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we may also in heart and mind thither ascend, and with him continually dwell, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in whose hands are the living and the dead, we give thanks for all those thy servants who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. Grant to them thy mercy and the light of thy presence, that the good work which thou hast begun in them may be perfected. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle general of St. Peter, beginning at the seventh verse. Dearly beloved, the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Here in the epistle.
Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 26th verse. Jesus said unto his disciples, When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will thinketh that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the promise. And I believe in one Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome to St. John's Church on this Sunday after the Ascension. Uh, we have a few announcements. Um, just a reminder that we have added a new weekday service. We've added a service at noon here in the church on Wednesdays. So the idea being that we're showing the local neighborhood that we're not just worshiping on Sunday. There's actually worship happening here almost every day. And so we're keeping the doors open. We're trying to welcome people in. And also it's a chance for all of those who work downtown or live downtown to make their midweek Holy Communion. So I encourage you to come and uh, it'd be wonderful to see you there. Uh, there's also a second Sunday Supper on June 12th. So far, we don't have a whole lot of people signed up, so if we don't have more people, then we're going to probably have to cancel it. So if you're interested, please do sign up quickly, and, uh, and we'd love to see you there. This coming Saturday, June 4th, will be our second uh, casual meetup at Starland Yard. With that, you don't have to sign up. You just show up. So there are food trucks. It was a wonderful time last time. It's the kind of thing you can invite your friends to. Uh, so I hope to see many of you there. I will be there. And also, we need volunteers for a couple of different projects. Urban Hope has an event here at the Green Meldrum House on June 7th. There is something about something like 70 children coming. There will be scavenger hunts, art, lots of other events, storytelling. So obviously we need some help, so please uh, sign up. There are links, I believe, uh, in the e-blast, but there's also information in your bulletin. And then also finally, um, there is a local home repair project that we're doing with the other Episcopal churches in our deanery. So if you have specific skills, if you happen to be an electrician or a roofer or something like that, we especially want you. But even if you just want to show up and paint and get to know uh, people in our Episcopal Church community and serve our local community, uh, that would be wonderful. That's June 25th. It's a Saturday as well. And I think there's also links for sign up uh, online and information in the bulletin. 
Finally, I guess I do have one more announcement. Sorry, it's a mouthful this morning. Um, we have a new summer education series uh, starting next week at 10 a.m. in Cranmer Hall. So uh, in between the services, there will be food and drink. Then we're, at about 10.15, we're going to start a, uh, a series that starts with a video, actually. Each video will go through um, some of the, uh, some of the uh, virtues and then also offer weekly practices, spiritual practices that we can incorporate into our week, uh, weekly and spiritual lives. So um, I encourage you to check it out. There'll be more information in this coming week uh, on eBlast. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me as well. That is open to adults, all adults, and also to uh, post-confirmation age youth. And then they'll split off with Stephen and have their own discussion. So they don't want us hanging around. Uh, with that, we will sing a hymn before the sermon. Scratch that. There's no hymn before the sermon. Father Hunt. <laughs> Jesus has given us a number of commandments, and uh, we've, we hear them on a weekly basis. One of them that we hear is within the canon itself, where Jesus commands us to keep a memorial of him. The memorial is a matter of remembering and celebrating and living his passion, his death, his resurrection, and ascension. Of course, the finest way we do that and this has developed over 2,000 years and is still developing, is the church calendar or the church year. We are currently in the octave of the ascension, which is uh, within the 50 days of Eastertide, which ends with Pentecost. Now, I could lecture uh, outside of this sermon about how the calendar developed using both the lunar calendar and the solar calendar, but I'll leave that for you outside this sermon time to look up on the internet. The uh, church year is nothing more than a schedule or a program for our living Jesus' life again. We are the body of Jesus in this world, and we are, in our commemoration of his life, death, and resurrection, living his life again liturgically. If that's so, then there are two times in particular in the church year when we should be experiencing the same thing that the apostles and disciples of Jesus experienced, and that was a sense of abandonment. We all know that when Jesus died on the cross, the apostles and the disciples and his followers all fled. They abandoned him. They ran away because they were afraid that the Romans and the Jewish leaders would be coming for them as well. And of course, again, in a different way, a somewhat different way, when Jesus ascended into heaven, they had a sense of being on their own. They had a sense of being abandoned, of Jesus somehow or another saying, now it's up to you. This. Uh, of course, prompted Jesus many times to tell them that you've been with me an awfully long time. Why is it that you still don't understand things? Why does your understanding lead to a sense of abandonment and not understand that the plan, the plan is what I've always told you, that I will be arrested and betrayed, that I will be condemned to death, that I will die, and on the third day I will be raised from the dead. And he even went on at other times, especially during the 40 days following his resurrection, to tell them that he was going to be returning to the Father. In a little while, I'll be with you, and then in a little while, I won't be with you because I go to the Father. Well, this left the church in a very strange state. Abandonment is not a good feeling. But sometimes humanity takes hold of abandonment, abandonment, takes hold of the opportunity of being left alone, and they do unusual things. Everybody knows the phrase, when the cat's away, the mice will play. 
I don't doubt that uh, some of us, especially uh, Bishop Lambert and Father Jameson and, and perhaps even I and, and Stephen, the music minister, uh, Stephen Branion, the music minister, have seen an opportunity here to do things that uh, otherwise wouldn't be done when Father Dunbar was not in Italy. <laughs> Maybe um, the bishop thinks that uh, things are in a really sorry state, of course we all know that's true, in the Episcopal Church, and uh, perhaps he's got the opportunity to lead another schismatic group. I know him well enough to think that he didn't imagine that, but I'm not so sure that I know Father Jameson well enough to think that he's not ready to have a guitar mass. And. Uh, you know me well enough to know that I'd love to gather the women of the church together on Saturday evening for the rosary and perhaps for benediction of the Blessed Sacrament on Sunday evening. But uh, we're not going to do those things because of what the church teaches about what happens now that Jesus has ascended to the Father. The best sign the church has given us of what the pattern should be is what the apostles did to fill the office of Judas, who killed himself. They got together and they prayed and they set the criteria for who should be a disciple, who should be an apostle, and they cast lots, which was their way of asking God to show his decision about who should be chosen among those that met the criteria. They chose Matthias, and therefore they took the opportunity of being in the world without Jesus there to look upon them or there to look upon him and even touch him. Good sign. But there are negative signs as well. We all have human feelings. Jesus alone never expressed the negative side of humanity, but we do all the time. It's called sin. Sometimes sin is nothing more than a lack of faith, a lack of hope, a lack of trusting in God's promise. Do you remember the old TV program Lost in Space? There was a doctor who was with the family that was lost in space, and he was sort of a Cassandra or a pessimist. And every time something happened that had a, a possible adverse effect upon the family lost in space, he would go around saying, we're doomed, we're doomed, as though there was nothing good that was going to come out of the situation. Well, that may be what humans tend to do. And living out the uh, aphorism when the cat's away, the mice will play, could be another opportunity. But that's not happening. It's not happening because we're faithful to the church's tradition. We're faithful to the church's teaching. We have all, in one way or another, sworn to comply to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the Episcopal Church, of the Christian Church. We consider our church and our practice within that church to be consistent with what Jesus taught the apostles and the apostles taught their successors, successors and their successors and their successors right down to Jesus, right down to Father Dunbar. Father Dunbar may be in Italy and Father Lambert, Lambert and Father Jameson and I may be left wondering sometimes what we're supposed to do, but we've got guidance. Jesus never said, you're on your own. Absolutely, it's never recorded that Jesus said, you're on your own. In 1 Peter 4, 7, as read this morning for the service, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Notice that phrase, the gift. What is the gift? The gift is the gospel. The gift is the good news. 
The gift is that God loved the world so much that he sent his son into the world to give us an example, to die for our sins, to promise us strength and courage and purpose with the giving of the Holy Spirit. These things are ours by the promise of God, and it makes clear that we're not on our own. We have great leaders in this parish, starting with Bishop Lambert and Father Dunbar. Both of them can trace their ordination right back to the hands of Jesus. We call it the apostolic succession because we say the apostles chose their successors and their successors and their successors right down to today. But it should be called the succession to Jesus because the first apostles were chosen by Jesus and he laid hands on them. So Bishop Lambert and Father Jameson and Father Dunbar and I can all trace our authority to teach and to preach and to bless and to celebrate the sacraments right back to Jesus. Father Lambert told me this morning in the sacristy that he has a piece of paper that diagrams his succession from Peter. Wouldn't it be wonderful if each and every one of us could do the same? Maybe we should ask the bishop who confirmed us if he has such a paper and ask for a copy of it and at the bottom of it or at the top, depending on whether it's in ascending or descending order, put our names because we received the same authority and the same power to teach and to preach the gospel to the world that ordained ministers do. We have the same vocation, not set aside for specific things like celebrating the sacraments, but as given the power and the authority to share our salvation, to share the gift, to share the good news with the world. There's another authority, not just the teachers and preachers, these three books, these three books are part of our inheritance and they are the foundation of our authority to teach. The first book is the Holy Bible. We use the King James Version with the Apocrypha as the authoritative text for our teaching. The articles of religion say that nothing can be taught as necessary for salvation unless it can be found and justified in this book. Everything hangs on this. Jesus no longer speaks to us as a person face to face, but Jesus speaks to us through his recorded word here and through the power of the Holy Spirit, which we'll get to in the next few points. The Bible, the first book, the Book of Common Prayer. This is nothing more than the Bible organized for worship. Parts of the text of every book in the Bible is taken and made a part of all of the services of the church to show and to witness to the fact that Jesus' teaching and Jesus' words are the foundation of everything that we do in our liturgies. There are other prayer books, but they have departed from the traditional teaching that has been handed down to us from the apostles and particularly through the Church of England and its prayer books. But we use this one because we feel that it is consistent with the teachings found in the Bible and the Apocrypha. And finally, you may never have thought of this as an authoritative book, but the hymnal. We use the 1940 hymnal, and I'm particularly in favor of it because it doesn't have some really loony tunes in it like the new one does. But everything in here has been reviewed by the House of Bishops as being consistent with the teaching of the Episcopal Church and being consistent with the teaching given to us in the Word of God as recorded in the Bible and in the prayer book. Nothing in here teaches anything contrary to what is taught in the Bible. Some of the hymns are a little pedestrian, and some of them are so glorious as to make you weep when you sing them. 
Stephen is not about to come in because the cat's away and the mice can play and arrange for us to walk in procession with maracas and tambourines. But if he did, he would be required to do it according to the words and the music of one of the hymns in this book. So we have the leaders of the church and its traditions and its teachings, the three books, the Bible, the prayer book, and the hymnal. But there's an even more important authority, a more important guiding influence and effect and purpose in the church. It's the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. The most important gift, the promise gift that Jesus said, I will be sending you a comforter. Not just a comforter, but one who will give you power, one who will give you authority, one who will inspire you in the traditional sense of the word, not inspire you like a vision of the Grand Canyon from its precipice, but to fill you with the Spirit to give you the indwelling of the Spirit with all its power and all of its authority so that what you teach and what you preach and what you share with your neighbors and with your children will be consistent with what Jesus taught the apostles and they taught their successors right down through the succession of the bishop who laid his hands on your head. I was told before the 8 o'clock service this morning when they saw me carrying three books that the sermon could not be over 40 minutes at 8 o'clock, and I promise you that it won't be 40 minutes at 11 either. And I'd like to close with one prayer. This is the prayer that links the succession of the bishops of the church from Jesus and Peter and connects it to our succession within the hierarchy of the church. This is what the bishop prays over candidates before laying hands on them. Almighty and ever-living God, who hast vouchsafed to regenerate these thy servants by water and the Holy Ghost, and hast given unto them forgiveness of all their sins, strengthen them, we beseech thee, O Lord, with the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, and daily increase in them thy manifold gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and ghostly strength, the spirit of knowledge and true godliness, and fill them, O Lord, with the spirit of thy holy fear, now and forever. Give them your gift, Lord. Give them the gospel and your word, and they'll never be on their own again. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing.
things come of thee, O Lord. And all thy own are given to thee. Amen. This Holy Eucharist is offered to the praise and glory of Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, who has not abandoned us, but has given us power by his Holy Spirit and in his church. It is also offered with thanksgiving for our graduates, Catherine Mazzell, Olin Ann Hayes, Charlton Strong, Anna Wiley, Asa McManney, James McClellan, and Turner Stevens. It is also offered for continued healing for Ashley Brigden. It is offered for those who have died and those who were injured on the river yesterday. And it is offered with special intention for those in mourning, those who have been injured, and those who have died in the Texas school shooting this week. Of your charity, I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And the best light of the rest will shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle hast taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we continually offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. He who truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and attend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking forth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, the God and healing. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ set unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye who travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also with St. Paul said, This is a true saying worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also with St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is sweet and right so It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through thy most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his most glorious resurrection manifestly appeared to his apostles and in their sight ascended up into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, thither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for the thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God, build him that taketh away the sins of the world. Blessed are those that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Yeah. 
who sitteth in the heavens over all from the beginning. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high. of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always.
Holly go. 